Thanks for joining us today as we take a look at the Marin Alpine Trail E2. This bike was part of our 2021 e-bike shootout and uh, today we're just going to be taking a detailed look at this bike specifically and its performance. Make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for our final episode in which we will have a roundtable discussion and seeing how this bike stands up against the other 12 bikes in the field. The Marin Alpine Trail E2 that we tested was a size large, retailed for $59.99 and weighs in at 54.1 pounds. It is a, a capable and aggressive trail bike, meaning it has less than 150 millimeters of travel and comes spec with a pretty decent offering for the price point that will get you out on the trails. It has a Fox 38 Performance Elite fork with 160 mil of travel and a Fox DHX Performance Elite rear shock. Marin opted to use the Shimano EP8 drive unit with a 630 watt hour battery. The drivetrain comes in the form of a Shimano SLX 12 speed and Shimano SLX 203mm rotor brakes are included for stopping power out on the trail. One quick note, uh, Marin has opted to use a organic brake pad material on this bike and we quickly changed them out as this bike was just so capable and so fast on the descent that we found we weren't getting the braking power we needed. Uh, we asked Marin why they opted to go that route and I, I guess uh, they were hoping for a quieter ride experience and also to maybe not have something that was too grabby and uh, too powerful for riders who maybe weren't used to riding high speed e-bikes. Um, nevertheless, if you live in a steep area or ride this bike to its potential, you're going to want to change those pads out. So. Um, moving on, this bike comes in a mullet spec, which means it's a 29 front, 27 and a half inch rear wheel. As part of our e-bike shootout, which Schwalbe sponsored, we had a test tire, which was a Magic Mary front and Big Betty rear. We ran those on all bikes to have an even playing field and really let us judge the bike on its performance and not different tire compounds. Our size large bike had a 485 reach, 631 stack height, a 1,264 mil wheelbase with 435 mil chainstays. The bottom bracket height was 340.5 millimeters and the seat tube angle was the steepest of the bunch with 78 degrees and the bike has a 63 degree head tube angle, which is definitely aggressive for a trail category bike, but just one look at this thing and it's coil sprung rear end lets you know it means business. For me, it was kind of in between the enduro and the trail. Yeah. It wanted to be an enduro bike, mm -hmm. but it didn't have enough of the characteristics of a trail bike. But man, if you're choosing one bike to kind of do it all, that thing is fast, it climbs well, it handles really gnarly terrain. Looks sick. Yeah, yeah it, it looks, looks sick. Amazing. Yeah, it looks this bike absolutely eats up the terrain. It is definitely a fun bike. One of my favorites out of the shootout. Um, it is hard charging, capable, and confident. Uh, I really liked the 630 watt hour battery. Um, it was a nice blend of uh, you know longevity, range, and not being overly heavy. The EP8 tune on this bike, we talked with Marin because it just felt peppy. Obviously, if you've got the you know mobile app, you can customize it, but out of the box, Marin definitely opted to go with a little bit zestier tune and we all enjoyed it out on the trail. It really excelled on rough terrain, hard charging rocks, drops, jumps. Um, it was definitely a bike that was ready to handle that kind of stuff. Now, some of the downsides, again, brake pad spec. Uh, the, the bike feels a little, it feels a little bit heavy on the trail, and um, which kind of leads to another critique, which was the rear shock spec. 
the Performance Elite shock doesn't give you a lot of tuning or custom ability. Um, we would have liked to have been able to play with compression and rebound a bit more and believe that if we were able to liven up that rear shock, maybe get a little bit more rebound, um, that we, we could have had a better time on this bike, getting it off the ground, getting it to pop and play on some of the smaller features. I, I guess a, a critique for certain style of riders and if you are willing to invest in the bike and upgrade the rear shock down the road, I think that you could really unlock this bike's even next level potential because out of the box, it's pretty dialed. So uh, 150 mil dropper post, would have liked to have seen a 170 on there. Um, again, the bike is so capable and, and in our opinion, even though it climbs great with that 78 degree seat tube angle and that EP8, it is equally capable downhill. So being able to get that seat out of the way a little bit more would have been a definite nice touch. So ideal consumer for this bike would be an aggressive rider. Uh, if you like to shred, if you like to plow through rocks, if you like to send drops, jumps, um, hammer through rough stuff, this bike is a blast. We definitely liked it a lot. Definitely not going to be the the lightest, snappiest short bike like a Fazari would be out of our shootout. Um, you know, if you're just kind of out cruising around, going out doing some pedals, exploring, this might not be the ideal bike for you. But um, if you are a performance-minded rider that wants to shred and stay under six thousand um, dollars, pretty solid package. So make sure you subscribe, guys. Stay tuned. This bike is going to be going up head to head with 12 other e-bikes in our shootout. So towards the end of this month, we're gonna be coming out with our final round table and see how this thing stacks up against the field. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you out on the trails.